G'day folks, I've been working on this job since about April. I've put videos up but this is the complete video. The video is all the new machining apart from the milling at the end. I don't have a mill anymore so I just used a clip from the previous video. Here I'm using a CCGT FC insert to face and turn this end of the part and then I take it out, turn it round and face it off again using the same tool. Then we change over to a parting tool. At various places in the video, so we don't all die of boredom, I've changed the speed of the video, sped it up a bit here and there. I'm sure you'll manage to work out when it has been sped up. One of the reasons I do strange things with parting tools is so that people who don't have the luxury of a tool changer are able to see that you can do all sorts of things with a parting tool. This is the insert I'm using. I bought it on eBay. It was advertised as being for aluminium. And there's a side view of it. And it's really quite sharp. Here's a quick look at the ammeter readings while the parting tool was taking these cuts. This finish really did surprise me but it cleaned up okay with a clean up cut. The speed here of the spindle is down to 600 RPM because my Z just can't travel fast enough with a thread of this pitch to keep, keep up with it. And this last pass is actually just a spring pass. Now we change over to the 35 degree insert to put the chamfers on and clean up the face. Here's the simulation with the program halt so that we can, I could take it out and turn the part around and continue on with the program. Not sure if I've mentioned it before, but that the aluminium is 2011 machining alloy, and that's a 12 mil two flute slot drill. Uh, I like using them for a hole that's going to be bored because you don't have to worry about the ramp where the drill angles are. Here we've just taken a two mil cut, which will open the hole up to 16 for the boring bar. I think I might have to see if I can get in touch with Minerik. I just can't get this spindle to stop when it should be stopped. It sort of wanders around. It'll keep going in the direction it was running and then it will reverse a bit. So quite hopeless as it is. I used two separate stock removal cycles to open up this bore. It easily gives you the opportunity to change uh, the parameters that you're using. Like in this one I changed from a feed of 0.12 to a feed of 0.1 um, not much but it was easy to do so far in this editing session I have deleted two of the narration clips because I really wasn't happy with them but as for the rest of it you're just getting it as it comes and also my voice is a bit weird at the moment I don't know why, it might be the medication I'm on or something, but it uh, doesn't sound normal. Can you see how my spindle just won't keep still? I mean, there should be nothing going to that uh, 
spindle motor it just takes forever to stop moving in one direction or the other the stock removal cycle in the Hercus software does this to remove the material for the domed part of the cap oh, I'm looking at it I'm thinking it's absolutely nuts and it is nuts just have a look at how it looks eight years ago yeah, it's all flying back and forth all that dead movement it's hopeless so I did this now whether I gained anything or not I don't know but I felt better about it anyway and here we're cutting the tool path that I created you can see we're drawing just over 5 amps which is the proper current the maximum current draw for my motor can't do much more than that with a half horsepower lathe it's interesting when you look at it how the surface finish diminishes as the surface speed drops off this is doing 3000 rpm which the way I would normally work it out would be should be about 1500 rpm based on the OD of 67 millimeters next we'll be switching over to the milling clip from eight years ago I don't have the mill anymore um, only ever used it for one job this one um, so I couldn't see a point in keeping it I really had no work for it now I've sped this up as much as I can so that we don't uh, all go to sleep it's just making the serrations as close as we can get them to the original sample that was supplied to me years ago climb milling worked well I did do some the other way but the climb milling gave a better finish and of course this has to go off to the polisher of course in reality the parts that I've just made they're not going to the polisher next they're going to someone who's going to mill those serrations in for me and then they will go to the polisher and hopefully that's what they'll look like when they're finished